This right here is what I like to call an ecosystem aquarium. I call it that because all I do to it is trim the plants every now and again and top up the water level. It hasn't had a water change in nearly 10 months now. The substrate system and the plants are doing all the cleaning for the water and the poop from the fish is providing nutrients to the plants. It's like a really good circle. Hence why I call it an ecosystem tank. And this right here is a bowl. It's about seven gallons. I mean, roughly, because it's like flat top and bottom and I just nearly broke it with my ring. Whoops, and I've got fingerprints all over it. Oh. Anyway, I want to see if I can create that back there in this bowl. Should be able to do it, theoretically, um, but sometimes things don't always work out on a smaller scale. It's gonna be a challenge, but one I'm up for. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add in some gravel in the base there. This is the gravel I've got. It's from my driveway, but don't worry, it's not near like anywhere cars are parked, so there's no nasties on it. Now, the reason we wanna put this layer in there, because that is gonna be the zone that harbors all the beneficial bacteria that will keep the inhabitants of the bowl alive. Now, we're not going for fish in this one. Well, not to start with anyway, that's for sure. Maybe at a later date. I know some of you frown upon it, but you know, I've found no problem keeping fish in bowls at all, providing they're the right size. You know, you don't want anything too big. Do not put goldfish in bowls, basically. So yeah, first of all, gravel in there, a good couple of inches, and it'll also give us a good base to start putting in some hardscape. There we go, nice little beneficial bacteria zone. Next up, plant nutrients. Now I'm putting aqua soil in my bags, I've been doing this recently and it's worked out a treat. Mesh bags. Yeah, here we go, look, little mesh bags. You can see through them and um, the roots go into them absolutely fine as well, but it locks all the nutrients down underneath the decorative layer on the top. And also it means we can reuse them at a later date if we want to as well, so really good. I'll leave a little link to these in the description because many of you are gonna ask, and because it is really good, it works so well. So I'm currently using this little area as the production, but behind it is my uh, African river tank. Now, this whole thing was set up using that method that I just showed you. I had like gravel down first. Actually, the gravel was in bags as well. Um, I didn't feel the need to on this one, but, and then on top of that, I had loads of aquasol in bags and then capped it all off with the sand. And I mean, I think the results speak for themselves there. So it's a really good method that's working really well. You don't have to put the aquasol in the bags, but I find that if you do, it just means you can reuse them. I like to reuse this stuff as much as possible. Um, it's expensive at the end of the day, so why not? If you can, do it. You don't have to you know, lock everything down in bags though. So for this project, I'm using the Tropica Aqua Soil. Um, I've got some fresh stuff, but look here, recycled from previous scapes. I've got this one here, which is all wet. So I'm just gonna about to suck out all that water. So you don't want that dripping everywhere to start with. I mean, it wouldn't hurt, but it's just not nice looking. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, recycled uh, gravel and stuff from another uh, setup as well. So like I say, I like to try and reuse everything where I can. And then if I really can't, I'll you know dispose of it and start again or I, I tend to put it all in like compost heap that sort of thing because you know none of it's bad for the environment so that's what I like to do. Right, so a couple of things. First of all, the mesh bags are completely made of plastic, so there's no metal on it at all that can rust or anything like that. And second of all, you must be wondering how I'm lighting this. So at the moment, I'm using my studio light that's coming down onto it, but it's gonna be over in this corner here where I'm using the Pled 510. It's a light that I use on a ton of my different tanks, you see. I've got it over there on that one as well. That's, um, that's a low-tech nature aquarium style one. And then I've got one here as well on the Neon Tetra jungle, which is looking so good. See, I know that light's gonna be more than adequate. It's gonna work so, so well. Um, next up, we wanna now cap the top of all of this with the decorative sand layer. This is the layer that you're actually gonna see when you look in the tank. So pick whatever color you want. Just don't make it bright pink or neon green for goodness sake. There we go, we've got a fantastic base to start from there. Look at that, so there's the angle. We do the angle so we can get some sort of perspective in the bowl. If everything's flat, you tend to lose the stuff in the background. So what I've done here is just provide that stage, if you like, and on top of this now, I could put my hardscape and then build around that. 
No idea what yet though. <laughs> but I have got lots to choose from. I wanna go for some angular wood, but we don't wanna take up too much space either because the point of this one is that we have loads of space for planting. So something simple, something central, and plants all around it. So I've managed to find this really nice piece of wood. Um, I'm not sure if it's gonna fit that, oh. <laughs> push it in, get in. Oh, we'll make it fit, oh, there we go. If I push it down in the sand a little bit, I might be able to get the angle that I'd like. Oh, there we go, straight away. <laughs> Turn that down a bit. That's looking good instantly. The only thing is though, this piece here is actually touching the glass, which means it's gonna be really hard to keep that area clean. So I think I'll snap that one back a little bit and then we can put some rocks around it as well. So I tend to find the key with small scapes is to keep the hard scape small as well. Um, you'll find that it doesn't just all get cluttered too quickly then. And I'm only just realizing how difficult it is to see everything here because I've got all that stuff going on behind it. I'm gonna move the tank over onto this stand that I've got here. On this stand, I'm gonna have a new tank soon, but it's not arrived yet, so we could just carry the build on here. Just a quick one, guys, because I don't want you to miss out. You can still get the thick Corey hoodies to come to you before Christmas. One absolutely awesome gift to yourself and also a great way of supporting the channel. I designed these myself because I thought they'd be funny. I didn't realize so many of you are gonna buy them. They're still available though, so click the link above if you're interested. There's also other stuff on my, uh, on my shop as well that you can take a look at, maybe buy something. Yeah, like I say, yeah, that's one of the best ways to support the channel and future projects so go take a look i'll leave a link in the description and the pin first comment thanks a lot guys there we go that's a bit better we can actually see what we're doing except for this big reflective bit there of the light um there's not a lot i can do about that though i suppose i can bring it over a little bit more will that work it will indeed okay we'll do that hang on there we go that's a little bit better i've got it balanced there you don't need to know about this. Anyway, let's get on with the build. So that looks great, but if we fill that with water now, that wood will try and float out. I mean, it'll move around for sure. Yeah, yeah, it can move around. So I'm gonna be a little bit clever. I'm gonna put a rock on top of it that holds it in place, but I'm gonna attach epiphytes, as in stick on plants, to that rock, and that will keep it locked down, but also disguise the rock because it'll be covered in the plants as well. The plant I'm gonna use is down here in one of my storage buckets. So is it in here? No, that's a, that's a Java fern, that's a large leaf one. And then in this one, yeah, here it is. This is narrow leaf java fern. Now I just chuck them in these buckets when I'm not using them. The ambient light lets them grow nicely. They don't generate any algae and they don't need a lot of nutrients to be honest. So yeah, they do really well. There's loads of little plantlets growing off and off of old leaves and things as well. So <laughs> works an absolute treat. But yeah, definitely want this one on a rock. And I think I found the perfect rock because it's not like, it's not in keeping with those, but it doesn't matter because you're not going to see it. So if I can put it down like that, yeah, there we go, like that, perfectly. That's gonna lock it down, and now I can glue all those plants to it. Yeah, that's right, glue. Right, many of you know this by now, but for those of you that don't, this is Gorilla Cyanoacrylate Super Glue, Super Glue, Growl, <laughs> Super Glue Gel. <laughs> yeah, so basically, it's just normal super glue, but in a gel form, it dries like a hard plastic, and it's completely safe for your fish your shrimp, for your plants, everything. So you just dab it on. It helps just to take some moisture. Just get a little bit of moisture on, on it as well. It just, just helps to bond a little bit better. Then we can just literally glue this part here, all the roots in the rhizome. That can stick straight onto it and it won't damage the plant at all. It'll just continue to grow and it'll be locked on. Go. that's looking perfect and it's not going anywhere I've also turned a load of the lights off as well because I'm trying to reduce the reflections on this bowl <laughs> but yeah I think we nailed it now that's looking good um, next up we can start doing more plants as usual one of a few more epiphytes and little bits of anubius on here and here and not too much though that'll be enough for this for the epiphyte plants because we want to go stem heavy it's an ecosystem we need fast growing stem plants that's always the key Thank you. 
epiphytes done, let's move on to the stem plants. First up, S. repens. It's not incredibly fast growing, but it stays nice and short and will be perfect in the foreground area. Not in the very foreground, but a few like sort of clumps of it there and there will look really good. And the good thing is I've actually got a load of it available here in my storage tank. Um, I just received delivery, S repens, S repens, I've got loads of it there. It's hard to tell what's what in there, but trust me, it is coming out, going in. These are all from Tropica, by the way. That's where I buy my plants from. And they're such good quality, look at this. I just keep them in these tanks with a sort of inch or two of water, light on the top, and lock most of the moisture in, put some air holes at the sides. It just keeps them growing. They get bigger and bigger, and you can just use them when you want, perfect. So here are the plants, look really easy to prepare. Take out the label take them out there, they come in these little recyclable pots and this is rock wool that soaks up the, uh, the water and the nutrients, provides it to the roots. So you, it's in two halves usually, so you can just break it away like that. Most of it comes away like this. And then what I like to do is take a fork and just run it gently across the roots and that'll take out any of the extra rock wool. Flip it around, same again. And there we go. And remember, this is a stem plant. We can just break it at the bottom there, just gently. And there we go, we've got even more plants to choose from. Perfect. I've got three pots of that. Probably don't need three pots, but plant dense and you're on to a winner. <laughs> Great. Next up, I want to use this plant here. This is Hygrophila pinnatifida. It looks like a little tree, doesn't it? How nice does that look? I want to use this as the main sort of focus of the background. Let me just put the pot in and see what it looks like. You have to put it on a rock. Well, you don't have to, but I want to. Put it on like a uh, another rock with a piece of glue. Oh, look at that. It's like a little forest, isn't it, in there? I don't want to go too crazy, you see, of filling the whole area up with just greenness and plants, because that's the, I've done that already. Let me show you. So that's the look I've gone for with this bowl. It's much smaller than that bowl, um, and it's got my um, chili respora in there, and a ton of shrimp as well that are actually breeding. Uh, there's one now. And this tank pearls, look, it's just pearling all the time. There's nothing in it, no filter, anything it took. Well, there is a filter, the plants are filters. Uh, it needs a trim back again soon. Wasn't that long ago I did it actually, but yeah, this is a full on green explosion. Um, I, I like it, don't get me wrong, but we want to do something different for that new one. And that's why I want to make sure I keep some of this sort of beached area. I think that'll look fantastic. Not too much though, because we still need a lot of plants, remember. So yeah, I'm going to attach those to a rock um, the same way we did with the ferns and the nubius, and that's going to look great in the background there, isn't it? And I'll tell you what else as well, which might be quite cool. That plant, Hygrophila pinnatifida, grows immersed, as in out the water, so well. So if that starts to come out the top, that would look so cool in this tank, wouldn't it? Oh, I can't wait for that. Right, next up, I'm going to do something that's worked really well in the past. Take a rock, put some of that glue back on it again. You take some moss. This is weeping moss, uh, again from Tropica. It's in these little tubs, which I'm not going to be able to... Yes, I am. <laughs> Please don't go everywhere. Please don't. There we go. Look at that. How gorgeous is this stuff? Look, stunning. Yeah, so what we're going to do is break these up into like smaller pieces, probably in half, like sort of mix them all into the moss and then glue that to the rocks. And then they sort of grow together and they look great, but they can take over. So you have to keep on top of them. That's why I'm only going to do, I've got two rocks there, but I'm only going to do three. And um, that'll just be placed strategically really hard to say that word, strategically around the edges there. Maybe one there, one there, maybe one over there somewhere. Yeah. Mm. 
awesome. So what we've got there is basically the moss is stuck using the glue and the pearl weed uh, is actually sort of intertwined into the moss because the the, uh, the pearl weed would die if it was just you know on the glue because it's not like a rhizome plant. Uh, that a moss is actually a rhizome plant, believe it or not. Anyway, so like, yeah, that should grow nicely now. Uh, Got to keep on top of it or it take over though. Oh, this is looking so good. But apart from the beached area, that's looking a little bit too perfect, isn't it? We need to add some more detail stones around all the edges now. And for that, I've got like an assortment of sort of uh, coarser gravels and finer gravels, uh, a, a good mix. I'm gonna sprinkle those in together. It should add a little bit more detail and realism to the skate. Right, and as always, when we're doing this, we take a handful and we just let go of it near the edges of the rocks. That gives us the most realistic look. And then like it sort of tapers out towards the edge of the tank or the bowl, bowl aquarium in this case. There we go, let's see. Look at that, instantly, looks way better, doesn't it? Much more realistic. Now we don't want to go overboard here. I'm just adding a little bit for detail. I still want to keep that um, sort of clean sand bit to the edge as if you're at the, some sort of shoreline. I just, I think that looks so good. I mean, some people like to just take that all the way to, you know, and so you, you cover up the sand completely. But nah, I think that looks good. There we go, stepping back. Look at that, looking great, isn't it? And those rocks actually go completely different colors to that. Hang on, let me spray them down, get them wet, and they instantly transform. There we go, see? So it's actually matching a little bit more now with the elderly stone. It doesn't look so sort of gray. Um, and when we've got the light above it, the proper light, and the water in, it'll look even better still. Speaking of adding the water, now is probably a good time. I'm also gonna move it over to its actual place where it's gonna be sitting. I don't know why I didn't just build it there in the first place, to be honest. <laughs> what? Oh, looking good, looking good. I'd say now is actually a really good time to put it, uh, to fill it up with water. The plants are actually starting to dry out, so that's absolutely perfect. And I'm not sure yet if I want to put more in, but once the water's in, I can have a little look. We might need a few more in the background because uh, overall the plant mass needs to be quite high. There's some roots there looking pretty good, but they need to go back in a little because it's a bit unnatural just growing upwards, didn't they? <laughs> there we go, that's better. Oh, fill it up. Right, this hose is directly linked to my tap and I've got an on-off valve here. So controlling the flow, we want to do this really slowly to start with. Right, obviously I'm going to speed this up, but I'm just good. It's probably going to take me a good 10 minutes to fill this whole thing up. That's a big exaggeration. I'm going to say it's going to take five minutes. Okay, we're halfway through the fill. I'm now going to add some dechlorinator and this means that the setup will be perfect. I need a tiny little bit of this stuff. This setup will then be perfect to be able to add our shrimp straight away. Um, we're gonna be adding beneficial bacteria as well and doing daily water changes, but for now we're just gonna fill it up, let it sit overnight. So it's now the next day, the bowl's cleared up lovely. But before we continue, I just wanna add a few more stems. I feel, feel like we need something else, something fast growing, just to really make use of any like excess nutrients, that sort of thing, and keep the tank balanced. And for that, I just wanna use a single pot of this stuff. This is my, oh, hang on. Myriophyllum matagrosense, I think. <clears throat> Let me zoom in so you guys can read it as well. Focus, please. Yeah, there we go. Look at how awesome it looks, like little mini trees. Uh, it's gonna look so good. I'm just gonna put it in the background area. This stuff's fast growing, remember? It doesn't seem to get out of control too easy though, so I can hack that back easy enough. It's not gonna take over the tank in no time, that's the thing. And I'm just gonna put it in the background area here. To be honest, you're probably not even gonna notice it for a while, at least until it's sort of grown a little bit taller. But that's the point, really. I just want it sucking up those nutrients. Oh, looking down at the top, it looks awesome. There we go, look, so from here, you can just about see one stem in the background area. But from the top, there it is, look. Right there, peeking round. You can't really see it from the back either. So actually, that's quite good because I didn't want the stem to be taking over the scape, but at least it's now there and it's gonna be drawing in those nutrients and that's exactly what we want. But guess what? It is now time to add in the inhabitants for this bowl. <laughs> Right, 
Right, if you guys are gonna have a go at doing this, the next few steps are really important. You need to make sure you've got yourself a testing kit, one that tests ammonia, nitrate and nitrite. You need to be testing it every single morning for at least the first week. Now I'm pretty confident, I've done this quite a few times, that everything's gonna be fine, we've got a lot of plants in there, but sometimes things can go wrong and stuff can swing the wrong way for reasons we can't fathom. So that's why the testing's important. Now, if you get a spike in anything at all, ammonia or nitrite particularly, then we need to do at least a 50% water change. Test again if you want to as well. Just make sure everything's of those acceptable levels. You might find that you need to do this for a good week or two to start with, but eventually everything's gonna balance itself out. But like I say, I've got quite a bit of experience in this now, and for me, it looks like I've got enough plants for everything just to be balanced out from the start, but I will still be testing every single day. But anyway, it's time to add the shrimp in. Here they are. Oh, look in this small little pot there's about a hundred in there one of them's actually buried as well meaning it's carrying eggs which means we'll be able to just keep the population increasing i'm not sure which one it is otherwise i'll show you oh it could be that one anyway i got these shrimp from a tank that i broke down not too long ago i didn't actually know this there was this many in there they're breeding really nicely um, but they should carry that on in this tank they're gonna absolutely love it in here as am i oh, i can't wait to just see them there's so many places for them to hide though so we we might lose them for a little bit. Now, temperature-wise, the room is heated, so the temperature that they're in is the same as that bowl. We're all good, we can go straight in. And remember as well, these are neo caradina shrimp. They're a lot more sort of hardy than the caradina. They're not that sensitive at all. To be honest, I bred these before by putting them in a bowl of tap water, uh, and they just kept breeding in there, so I just didn't take them out. So yeah, they're really, really hardy. They're a great choice for first-time shrimp keepers. I struggle with caradina myself, to be honest, but I don't struggle at all with the neos. Neos are great in their own way. I mean, you can get all the different color variations as well you can get um, the black I've got black sakuras in here I've got a couple of blues uh, but they're all they're all babies at the moment um, a couple of juveniles as well so the colors don't really come through until they get to adult size a couple of blacks that are adults look I think one of those actually is so blue that it looks black without the light on it we'll see in a minute That was a lot of shrimp going in one tank and they're all gone. <laughs> oh, they're so teeny tiny. They're actually quite hard to pick up against that white substrate, but they should start. Oh, there we go. That one's got eggs. They're buried. Yes, awesome. This means we can, oh, hello. The background, another black. <laughs> we'll be friends. So yeah, this, this, this is brilliant. This is just a start, guys. Uh, this they should keep multiplying keep breeding the plants gonna keep growing i will put some fish in it at some point but maybe not until it's a little bit more established maybe in a month or so's time i think it'd be really good to add some fish again it won't be big fish it'll be tiny little ones that don't mind being in a bowl at all i'm probably going to go for some little rice fish to be honest i think that'd be great in here we can get them breeding as well then but there's one more thing that we need to put in the bowl ecosystem that's in this big ecosystem and that is floating plants you can see them all at the back there i've taken a bunch out the front because <laughs> you couldn't even see into the tank at one point but this is really good the reason floating plants are so good is that because they are sort of in the atmosphere and roots in the water they grow quick and that means that they require nutrients and they pull those nutrients from the water column so we can put them in at least for the startup you can remove more and more as you go along but to start with get a couple in there get them growing and it works a treat and the floating plants that i'm going for are the ones that i've used over here on this low tech tank this one has actually got a filter uh, it's just low tech in general it's pretty much the same but with a filter. It's doing great. We've got loads and loads of this mini water, less, water lettuce here growing, and I might as well pinch some of that. It's gonna have some taken out of this tank anyway, so I might as well move it across. Got a couple of little pieces of it. We don't need any more than that. It stuff grows really quickly. I'm placing it in the back as well, so it doesn't spoil like the view of the tank, and that'll just be awesome. Pull the nutrients out. It's not completely essential, but if you can get hold of some floating plants, thoroughly recommend you put them in. And love them or hate them, there's still one more thing that we need to put in the tank. Yes, I am, of course, talking about snails. Ram horn snails in particular, they're my favorite. This is a little tank I've got going that I breed them in. Um, just keep chucking food in it, basically, and they keep multiplying. I've got quite a few in here. For me, ram horn snails, or just snails in general, are just essential for a good ecosystem. I absolutely love them. They just clean everything perfectly. Like, look at this tank. It is absolutely spotless in comparison to any some of the other ones up on this rack that uh, this one needs uh, sorting out. I just recently took out fish in there, but it's still cleaner than all the other ones. I, I just leave these racks, you see. They just let them do their thing. They're like storage for different fish that we've got like a quarantine sort of section if you like so in here we've got some epistogramma um, they are the cacatoides 
double red thingies. I'm going to be doing a tank for them as well soon. But yeah, I'm going to take a few of these, put them in that tank. It's just so, so good for the tank health in general, in my opinion. People worry about them overproducing. The only way they overproduce like this is if you put too much food in. If you just feed as required, then the population controls itself. Mm -hmm.